Hello and welcome back to my latest SQL Server Quickie. In today's SQL Server Quickie, I want to tell you about one of the most important concepts in a relational database, crash recovery. The crash recovery process makes sure that your database still contains consistent data if your SQL Server has crashed. But crash recovery is also used in other places in SQL Server, like when you perform cluster failovers, when you fail over with an always on availability group, when you create database snapshots, or when you run database consistency checks through TPCC CheckDB. Before we crash our SQL Server, let's switch over to the flip chart where I want to describe the basic idea about crash recovery to you. I want to show you now on the flip chart how crash recovery works in SQL Server. Imagine we have here our timeline and let's say we have performed here a checkpoint process and our SQL Server crashes here. In addition, imagine we have started here a transaction and that transaction would commit in the future after the crash. When SQL Server crashes now, the following things are happening during the crash recovery. In the first step, SQL Server performs a so-called roll forward phase and redoes all those transactions that have occurred since the last checkpoint process up to the crash. So in our case, SQL Server performs a roll forward of all those transactions which were committed since the last checkpoint process. And afterwards, the second phase is the so-called rollback phase. And during the rollback phase, SQL Server just undoes all those transactions that have started but not yet committed. So in our case, that transaction here is rolled back because that transaction doesn't have yet committed because of the crash of SQL Server. Let's switch now SQL Server. Let's switch now to SQL Server Management Studio where I want to show you how crash recovery happens within SQL Server. In this demonstration, I want to show you how the crash recovery process recovers your database to a fully consistent state when SQL Server crashes. In the first step, I create a simple table and insert a record into it. And afterwards, I start a new transaction and perform an update statement against that table. But the transaction itself is not yet committed. This is a so-called in-flight transaction, just a pending, uncommitted transaction. And now imagine what happens when SQL Server crashes. I simulate here a crash by using a shutdown with no wait command in a different session. After our SQL Server has crashed, let's restart it through the SQL Server Configuration Manager. And now, during the startup, every database is going through the crash recovery process. As I have mentioned on the flip chart, the crash recovery consists of two phases the roll forward and the roll back phase. During the roll forward phase, SQL Server replays transactions that were not yet persisted on our data files because the checkpoint process wasn't yet running. And during the roll back phase, SQL Server just undoes all pending in-flight transactions. And that includes the transaction that we have started but had not yet committed. When you now look into the table with a select statement, you can see that the update statement was not performed because the transaction was not committed. It was just rolled back by the crash recovery process. 
In this sequel server quickie, I have introduced the concept of crash recovery to you. It is one of the most important concepts in a relational database because crash recovery makes sure that your database is always consistent. As I have said at the beginning of the SQL Server Quickie, crash recovery is used in many different scenarios across the relational engine to provide you with a database that is consistent. I hope that you have enjoyed today's SQL Server Quickie and I'm already looking forward to see you again next month. Stay tuned!